a small business owner is here. <laughs> and he is a person who's, who, uh, <laughs> he owns a liquor store, Gethsemane uh, Liquor. Please welcome Original Fig. Hey, Scott, good to see you. How you doing out there? Shout out to the balcony. I can't hear myself so good because uh, this is how I talk. And I'm not getting a whole lot of me in the monitors. Yeah, let's uh, uh, turn this gentleman up in the monitors if we yeah, could. If you could. I feel a little like I'm overpowering you a little bit. Hey, you're a strong guy, you know? Didn't let that ankle injury slow you down much. Not much. We're out here on the road, real road dog. <laughs> Original Fig. We've only spoken once, is That's that right? right? That's right, Scott. Yeah. Thanks for having me back on the show. It's so wonderful to have you back. You are a, I mentioned it on your way out here, uh, you are a small business owner. You own Gethsemane. Hey, I just want to say, you actually mentioned it before I came out. I am, I mean, I imagine, thank you. Well, I mean, like this is for the record, right? Like we're recording this. So for future generations listening to this, I don't want them to get hung up like, actually, I, I don't, like, I, I'm picturing the guy walking out while Scott is saying who he is, and I think it's confusing. I beg your pardon and your indulgence, original fig. You got both. I want to be a good guest, you know what I mean? I wouldn't say you've started out on exactly the right foot, well, but... To me, I think part of it is not just being like, you know, sociable and nice and everything. It's like also, it's like you got to be a good guest for the show, not just for the host. Okay. Well, uh, you're also... Some people thought that was deep. Like I heard some people go like, oh. <laughs> you never thought about it that way before. You're also uh, a pedant, apparently. And a pedant? Uh, a pedant, I think you'll find like P. Diddy. I think you'll find it's pedant. No. It's pedantic. <laughs> Can I tell you a story? Can I tell sure. you a story? This, this is not my story, it's a friend of mine. Who's, who, which friend is this? This is a friend of mine named Janie. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> she went to theater school, right? Right. And so this teacher was like telling everybody, because somebody said pecan. And the, teacher's, the teacher goes, it's not pecan, it's pecan, it's pecan. And he was like really making them feel like they were dumb slobs, right? <laughs> and then one of the dudes in the class spoke up and said, why? It's not panut. <laughs> And a teacher had to give it up. It's like, that's a good one. You got me. Good roast. I want to say Panut, though, now. I do, too. <laughs> Panut. Panut. It's way more fun. Let's agree we'll say Panut All from right. now on. In my opinion, you should say words however it feels the best. Yeah, right? Coming Who out of cares? your own mouth. Who cares? It's your do, mouth. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? If you do, then we're fine. So original fig. That's me. We spoke once. I barely remember anything about it. It was during a pandemic, Scott. You know, uh, 2021 it was. Was it? Yeah. And we were on Zoom. We weren't in person. So I understand why, you know, you see a lot of people. It wouldn't make an impression on you the way it did on me. Speaking to you, it's a big deal, you know. Because I'm just, I'm just like a little guy who runs a liquor store. Gethsemane Liquor and Scratcher. We sell liquor. We sell scratch offs. We why, sell. Why is it, why is it not liquor and scratch offs? Well, I thought it would attract some more business from people who would read a slightly obscene thing into it. Liquor and scratcher. Yeah. And I'm like, they might not even know they're making that connection. They're subconscious pervs, and then smart. They got a drink too. So we sell top shelf liquor and off-brand snacks. Why the disparity? I'll tell you why. Because if you got the top shelf liquor, you're not gonna notice how off-brand the snacks are. <laughs> but, 
in liquor stores, pardon me for asking, but, but aren't... You can ask me anything, Scott. I'm an open book. <laughs> Are, don't you make most of your money with the impulse buys, the, the snacks, etc.? No, because the liquor is so expensive. We make most of our money from that. <laughs> What's your markup? Uh, like 150%. <laughs> it's too high. <laughs> hey, results speak for themselves. But look, <laughs> the lowest price item we have, liquor-wise, Johnny Walker Blue starts at three fifty a bottle. <laughs> and then the snacks are so cheap, people are like, I'd be crazy. I'd be, I'd be wasting money not buying these snacks. Why should I go to the supermarket and buy Doritos when I can buy Arribas? Hexagonal shaped chips with like some nacho cheese on them. Hexagonal is six or seven, I can't recall. I think it's six. It's six? I could be wrong though. Easier than seven to, to make. Would I that be, do, does anybody know? Six. Six, we nailed it. Did it. it feels good. What is seven? Do we know? Sa sex? Sept. Septu Everyone's going sad. Septagonal, all right. Then we got octagonal. Oct stop stop everyone, sign. Everyone knows octagonal. Everyone knows octag. Because of the octagon. Octagon, that's right. <laughs> I'm let's, talking like you suddenly. Let's step into the octagon. <laughs> you think I pronounce it octagon? I think out of any word you... Uh, it's octagon, come on. <laughs> but we don't just sell liquor yeah. and gambling. We also sell mild gambling. We also sell community experience because we do a lot of fun stuff at the liquor store. What exactly do you do? I feel like, is it, do you have tastings or what exactly do you do? No, we do like plays and stuff. <laughs> Full plays. Yeah. We had a, a O'Neill festival this past summer. To do All My Sons? We did All My Sons, Long Day's Journey. Long Day's Journey? Yeah. In repertory? Yeah. Now look, <laughs> here's the thing. People love it. Uh, it gives local actors a chance, you know, to do something they wouldn't get to do otherwise. Like the people that aren't good enough for community theater with all their snobbery. They get to be part of the Gethsemane players. Now, are some of the roles filled out by bottles of liquor and costumes? Yes. <laughs> But these are, these are roles with very few lines, like spear carriers, essentially. You know what I mean? If we're talking about the bard. And, and our audience is coming for the full four-hour experience of oh, Long yeah. Day's Journey? Oh, yeah. Because you can drink in the store. <laughs> so let's say, let's say you're a high-functioning alcoholic with disposable income. <laughs> and you literally have nowhere else to be, right? You can't be at home because you'll... I don't know, you jump out a window or whatever. So it's like, why don't I take in an evening off the theater? So they come down, and of course, as we all know, the liquor store is the hub of the neighborhood. It's where everybody hangs out, people talk about politics, they talk about current events. And so, they, you know, they come down there, there's not a lot of seats, you know, because of the the rows of... Their you know, aisles, the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's like... Of liquor. It's all the stock and everything. I guess you could sit on a case of Budweiser. Oh, do you not have anything that common? We have one beer. It is a Chimay that they only make once every 75 years. <laughs> it's extremely bitter. I've only had one guy actually buy it, and the next day he died. <laughs> I don't know if it was a bucket list situation. I don't think the beer killed him. Is the 75th year coming up soon? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I wonder if the beer is better right might off be. the presses. It might be. I wish we could ask that guy, but he's dead. <laughs> like if he'd hung on. <laughs> It'd be interesting to have a taste test of someone the day before it comes out and yeah. then the day it comes out and see, you know, the, what the, the Chimay challenge. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And then also do Pepsi. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> um, 
So, so people are going there the full four. I would imagine it would be a lot of people like coming to get their liquor in bags, just catching ninety seconds of. Oh, that happens too. Mm. But I mean, you know, when the people that come for it, they stay. There's no intermission. When I saw Long Day's Journey with Alfred Molina, of course. Sure, Freddy. <laughs> Dear old Fred. From what? <laughs> From Nightmare on Elm Street? <laughs> no, Freddy Molina. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it's, it's a double nickname name. Because you could go Al or you could go Fred. Must be great. <laughs> Your name, by the way, Original Fig, yeah. what, it, what, what, uh, what is that? We did talk about this last time. Remind I me. I don't blame you for not remembering. My family had a plan for how many kids they were going to have and what their names were going to be. I'm the oldest. My name is Original Fig. Then comes my sister, Additional Fig. <laughs> then comes our little brother. What? Another Fig? <laughs> and then our little baby sister, she's baby of the family. Enough already with the Figs. <laughs> they had another baby after my little sister, a surprise, and they gave her up for adoption. <laughs> because they had made a promise. They had a plan. Yeah. They ran out of fig names. <laughs> or fig categories, I should say. Seems like they ran out of names after you. <laughs> this was the plan. This was the this plan. This was always the plan. Always the plan. And uh, it's great because they're, you know, they're, uh, they're non-gendered names. So you never have to worry about that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Good. It's very... Uh, uh, like some people are like, hey, you can pick your own name. My parents were like, no. This is your name forever. <laughs> Is, is Fig your last name or no? No. Okay. Would you like to know what my last name is? Oh, sure. <laughs> it's an Italian name. Catatonica. Catatonica. Yeah. In, in Italian, it means catatonic. <laughs> is it... Uh, so your ancestors were... They were all catatonic. Patients? Yeah. Eventually, they all lapsed into catatonia, which is the region we're from in Italy. Oh, beautiful. It is, isn't it? Yeah. And your, your, your store is in... Uh, uh, in the neighborhood. In yeah. the neighborhood, right, yeah. Listen, we got some fun stuff coming up. Oh, okay. So this is for the back to school? Yeah, for back to school. <laughs> First of all, back to school sale <laughs> on all whiskeys, rice, and bourbons. <laughs> and we're offering 90% off snacks. Whoa. But these are cheap snacks. These They're are like so cheap. 30 cent bags They're of chips. They're so cheap. Even with the markup, it's ridiculous. So they are like, three you cents. Like, you like ho hos? Do I like ho hos? Yeah. Sure. How about hee hees? <laughs> What about teehees? No? Nope. They're a little too pricey. <laughs> what about Twinkies? Do you have Twinkies? Oh, like Hostess Twinkies? Yeah. We got Maitre D's Twinkles. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the thing. What's fun about them is they're like a bunch of cream with a little bit of sponge cake inside. That's a better ratio for me. I mean, it's a mess, though. Yeah. It's a mess. You just kind of open one end of the package and squeeze it in there. Be fun to put two Twinkies around that and have, like, a sandwich. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> You're fun. <laughs> Thank you. You're fun. You should come be in one of our shows sometime. I would love it. I, I haven't tread the boards in quite a long time, but... Uh... Do you know we're going to do Wicked in the fall? <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That seems ambitious. What, I, if, if a man's uh, reach should not exceed his grasp, how is he better than a common ape? That's a good point. Thanks, man. Did you grow up loving theater? Are you a theater guy? Is this... I, I love the arts, and I love liquor. They go hand in hand a lot. They do, right? Yeah. Do you remember that scene in Birdman? 
Do, do I remember the movie Birdman? Do you is remember that... there was a specific scene in Birdman where the guy who plays Birdman, he's like, I did a high school play. And then the famous writer, um, what's his name? John Updike? Raymond Carver. Raymond Thank Carver. you, Raymond Carver. It honestly, in the world of the movie, it wouldn't have mattered. But Raymond Carver shows up to this high school play and he writes on a napkin, hey, you were really good or whatever. And they say, you know, hey, give this to Birdman. And so, young Birdman. Bird boy. So, yeah, bird boy, sure. That's fun. You're fun. <laughs> so, bird boy's backstage. He reads the note on a napkin. And he's like, all right, now I've decided to be an actor. And he carries this napkin. It, like, means a lot to him and everything. And then years later, when he's bird man, and he's like, he's having a hard time, and like all the younger generation cares about is going viral. And he realizes, oh no, Raymond Carver, the man who inspired me to be an actor, he was drunk because this was a cocktail napkin. He pieces that together. And he was trying to hit on him? No, he was trying to encourage him to be an actor, which he already was. And so Birdman says, that made me want to be an actor. But I guess the high school play didn't make him want to be an actor. He was just in it somehow. And then Raymond Carver, who had nothing to do with the theater at all, <laughs> writes some note on a, on a cocktail napkin. So I guess Raymond Carver walks out of a bar with a full drink, <laughs> somehow walks in front of a high school, and then says, I wonder what's going on in there. Sees there's a play, they say, hey, Mr. Carver, you're gonna have to finish your drink first. <laughs> he goes, can I keep my napkin? They say, of course, you're Raymond Carver. <laughs> it's a beautiful story. Beautiful. So, I, my, my I, I, feel, I well, feel like it would be better if it was George Washington Carver. The inventor of the peanut? The peanut. <laughs> I can't the, believe I forgot so soon. Yep. He made the peanut great, according to Run DMC. What about peanut butter instead of peanut butter? Butter. Peanut butter. Peanut butter. Peanut Why butter. not? Why not? One nut. One nut. <laughs> I can't get over how fun you are. So, so wicked. Yeah. That's it's going to be big. We got a great cast. Who, who does the music? Oh, most of it is like karaoke tracks. Oh, okay. I just wondered if you played piano or anything like that. Or... I myself am not, look, I'm not good at anything, right? Mm. I can't sing, I can't dance, I can't act. What do you do? <laughs> You're doing goody two-shoes. Yeah. That's an old song. Yous are too young to get that. That's a good reference, though. This guy's fun. The more you say that, the more antagonistic I feel you are. <laughs> Why? I'm having a great time here. Maybe it's your dialect. Maybe. Maybe it's you? <laughs> now if that feels antagonistic. Well, it is a little bit. I'm being nice. <laughs> I'm having a good time. Okay. We're, we're, we like each other. We like each other. We're friends. We're even. <laughs> in terms of status. In terms of status, we're even. Great. We're just two dudes. Just two guys. Hanging out, having a conversation. Wonderful. So what, who's the cast in Wicked? We got Terry Hatcher is going to be playing. How did you get Terry Hatcher? I, you know, called some people and, you know, the price was right for her. Well, She's going to play Glinda. What's the price? I, I, I don't feel comfortable saying how much we're paying the actors. Okay, but you are paying them. Yeah, oh yeah, everybody's getting paid. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. In liquor? No. Well... Terry Hatcher's not getting paid in liquor. Some of our more seasoned local thespians <laughs> will be paid in liquor. <laughs> Who, uh, so Terry Hatcher, that's a, what, a, what a get. That is incredible. She's terrific, you know? Yeah. She's triple threat. Wait, uh, what, she, what are the three? She acts, she sings, she's famous. <laughs> Good get for us. And then playing Elphaba, uh, a local news uh, anchor. <laughs> Uh, her name is uh, Susan 
Hey Town, and she's going to be playing Elphaba. Hey Town, Susan Hey Town. She's terrific. She's good, and she she reports the news in yeah. town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In your local neighborhood. She's the anchor. It's been on the longest six years. A lot of short-lived uh, uh, ten years on a news. Why team. is that? Some people say that there's poison in the ground. <laughs> that the news station was built on poison ground. And some people are like, oh, it's haunted. I'm like, come on. Let's not, let's not be children. The ground is poison. And it seeps up. It seeps up through the floor and through their shoes. And you can always tell when it's going to happen. They snap on air. During a, it's always during a broadcast. Always, it's always been captured during a broadcast. <laughs> and they just snap. They just snap. And what do they do? Do they? It'll be like, it varies. Like some, sometimes they'll just start clawing at their face, <laughs> but still talking in a normal voice. That's chilling. <laughs> I remember one guy, um, Ken Gardner, who was like, um, and that's all for us. And it's all for you because a lake of fire is coming that will consume us all. <laughs> One guy popped out his own eye. I guess better than someone else's. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. And it was kind of funny because like, he gouged it out and then he turned it around to look at himself. <laughs> and it's like you could hear the crew laughing. It was fun. At this point, so many people have done this on air. <laughs> yeah. To... yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, they take bets, the crew. They have like a pool every week to see who's going to snap. Why is the crew not snapping? <laughs> because they have better shoes. Oh. Because they don't wear dress shoes. They're wearing like grounded shoes. Got it. That they... <laughs> I don't know why the news anchors don't wear, you know, yeah. rubber sole <laughs> shoes. You don't see that low, usually. I know. They wear, but none of them half ass it. Like they wear a full outfit. Wow. It's not like wearing tennis shorts and like a suit and tie, you know, coat and tie. Feels like you need like an Aaron Brockovich type person to come in and and pull one of those court tricks where it's like, hey, do you want do, do you want to drink that water? No, well, it's got the ground in it, you know. Yeah, I know. I mean, <laughs> but the but the thing is, is like everybody knows it already, and they just can't stay away from that camera. Yeah. They're addicted to it. The price of fame. Because to be a local news anchor where I'm from, you get treated like the king. Really? Oh, every door opens for you. You never pay for another dinner in your life. People trust the news anchors in my town. That's good, yeah. Well. Trusted news source. I don't think it is good because <laughs> these people have a, a brain poisoning from <laughs> the ground. Sometimes it seeps into the news where it's like, I don't think that's true. <laughs> like they'll say, you know, there was a, uh, you know, 10 car pileup on the I-100 and uh, no fatalities. Um, there was a, a big giant dinosaur there and he waved to everybody and everybody waved back to him and they had a great time. <laughs> Now for sports, we go over to Ron, you know? And it's like, did anybody hear that part about the dinosaur? That didn't happen. But they haven't snapped yet. No, that's not a snap. Mm. That's an early warning sign, though, for sure. Sure. <laughs> so, but you have one of these people playing uh, the, the... Yeah, Susan Haytown. She's going to play Elphaba. Are you worried she's going to snap midway during the run? Not or? so much worried as I'm counting on it. <laughs> Why? Well... It's a one night only performance. Oh, oh. Su bless you. Susan is good. <laughs> Susan is good, but I, I need her to like really dig deep for this character. It's very emotional. Right, right. And she's got to really bring it for Defying Gravity. Right. And I'm hoping like <laughs> when we haul her up on the wires, that'll trigger something. And then she'll snap. It'll be like a big moment. <laughs> Boom, curtain down, intermission. Well, not in our case. We don't do intermissions, but I wonder we don't have a curtain. Right. But um, the only problem with her playing Elphaba is, of course, she's going to be above people. I worry about the poison from her shoes dripping on the other cast members. So everybody's going to be wearing those ponchos you get at the zoo when it rains all of a sudden. Like the splash zone when you go to SeaWorld. Yeah, sure. Or see Gallagher. Or, or Gallagher, too. 
or Waterworld the stunt spectacular? If you sit in a splash zone there. Sure. Or, um, what other wet shows are there? What's the wettest show you can think of? It's gotta be another wet show. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Uh, Othello? No, it's dry. That's a dry show. Othello's a pretty dry show. What about, like, what if they did an ice skating show, but they turned the heat on at, at the beginning so that slowly the ice melts? <laughs> you just see people slowly see. And they can't, you can't walk for shit in those skates. Maybe you could time the performance to when you think she's gonna snap already like you see the warning signs like you see her on the news right giving some sort of uh, erroneous information you're like okay curtain up in half an hour right she did say um on a recent newscast that she could see everybody at home <laughs> and she started describing people <laughs> like this guy's got glasses on and he's he's wearing a blue shirt and it's like Probably there was, I bet there was one dude watching who like had glasses and blue shirt and he probably freaked out. <laughs> right? Broken clock though. Yeah. How long did that segment last? Oh my god, they went over overtime. <laughs> they cut into primetime programming. <laughs> I didn't know they were allowed to do she that. She must have talked for two and a half hours describing people. <laughs> I think she's ready to go. <laughs> She's ready to pop. She probably is, yeah. <laughs> you gotta get it. It's gonna be a good show. <laughs> yeah. Terry Hatcher, Mrs. H Town. Susan Haytown. Haytown. Hey yeah. Haytown. Then we got Jerry, is gonna be uh, the wizard. Jerry. Yeah, he's one of our regulars. Mm. He's a bourbon man. Was it, and has he been in other previous... Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah He's yeah. a regular. Yeah. Uh, he was our Shimble, sh uh, Shimble Shanks. Skimble Shanks? What is it? We did Cats. <laughs> and did he, you, was the, he was the railway cat. Yeah. Did you do the butthole version? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it just makes sense. Sure. How did, how did uh, Jerry feel about that? Oh, Jerry's a wild man. He was... <laughs> He was down to clown. <laughs> he did, he threw his back out. He's trying to lick himself. <laughs> he was really into it. And it's like, he tried it. He started it in rehearsal. And I was like, Jerry, you're not going to be able to do it. <laughs> and then he like, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of this, but like on stage, he's like, I'm going to, you know, during the show itself, he went for it. And boy, the noise he made. <laughs> Just a strangle. Whoa! And then he was pretty much out of commission for the rest of the show. He was just, everybody had to move around him on, on stage. And he was like, he was crying a little bit. Like some tears came out. Because I think he was trying to drag himself off. And I was in the, you know, we, I built one of those little uh, half shell things so I could pop my head in through the floor. That the orchestra leader yeah. usually. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, Jerry, don't. Just, just, just lay there, Jerry. He apologized to me later. <laughs> That's sweet. Yeah. We have a good working relationship. <laughs> I love all my cast. I love all my, my actors. You know, cast and cats have the same letters. They're just I know, in a different order. I know, it me out. Yeah. I remember I was up late one night, and I was polishing off uh, a bottle of Stoli, and I, because every once in a while I have some cheap stuff just for fun. And um, I was looking at it, my eyes started to blur, you know, it's like at that point, in being drunk, and... Um, I was like, cats, 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 cats. <laughs> and I went to the window, and I opened a window, and I yelled out the window, you don't know what I know. <laughs> and some people got mad. <laughs> it's a fun story, though. Well, <laughs> you know, I was like, shut up. And I said, that's not an answer. <laughs> You still don't know what I know. <laughs> then eventually they called the cops. But the cops are regulars too. These two guys. All Reg the cops actually. Regulars of your store. Yeah. They wow. come in there all the time. What do the, cops buy? Liquor. Lots of it. <laughs> Top shelf stuff? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they love it. They love expensive liquor. Every cop loves expensive liquor. <laughs> They're walking out of there. 
You know how, here's how you know a liquor is really expensive. If the bottle just looks insane, it looks like a sculpture and it's like, there can't be anything in that. That's got to be solid marble or whatever. I remember Dan Aykroyd's vodka. It was like a big skull. (laughs) That's child's play. (laughs) What are some of the big sculptures that, that you sell? They look like, it's like, you know, some ceramic bottle of tequila. And then it's like, it looks like a statue of a person. And then it turns it like legs of a person. And then it turns into like, I don't know, like the, the, the belly of a sheep or something. And then out the top comes like a, a palm tree. And instead of the leaves on the palm tree, it's like, you know, like a, like baby arms, like all around. And they're all holding like a pearl. That's what you're talking about. Four figures. Yeah. Four fig. Oh, uh, thousands of dollars is what it costs. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Wow. That's exactly what I mean. You cracked the code. <laughs> I thought you were talking about the four figures on the bottle itself. I guess that too. <laughs> that sounds pretty boss. Kind of one of the only appropriate words to, to describe that imagery. Do you use that word a lot? No. <laughs> I haven't heard anybody say that in a long time. Just, I feel like on happy days maybe is the only time I heard somebody say it out loud. It honestly just popped in my head because you, my mind was blown by just imagining that. Do you like talking to me? <laughs> yeah. Why? Why do you ask? I don't know. I can't get a read on you sometimes. I know you're fun. I know you interpret me as antagonistic, but I'm trying to be fun too. This feels antagonistic. (laughs) Man, I think you got a very low bar for antagonism. (laughs) I thought we were just having like a deep conversation. Maybe I'm just used to it. I'm used to guests coming on this show and being incredibly antagonistic. And that's what I expect. Who would do that to you? (laughs) Thank you. Didn't answer my question. (laughs) I feel like I'm yelling out the window. You really want to know? I thought it was rhetorical. No, I want to know. <laughs> Big chunky bubbles. <laughs> Number one with a bullet. Do you know him? The bubble artist? <laughs> yeah, the bubble artist. He makes bubbles out of soup, stews, and chowders? <laughs> yeah. We hired him for an event one time. What? Yeah. We what had a, We had a kid's day at the liquor store. Good. Where, I mean, we weren't letting kids drink liquor. Everyone got, every, every kid got one little sip. <laughs> and he like sets up his thing. He's complaining the whole time. And it was just a god awful show. And it smelled bad. <laughs> he got paid though. Oh, good for you. I'm good. as good as my word. All right. Good. What, do you remember the, the soup he was using or the stew? I think he did like a, uh, like a North Carolina, some kind of meat stew. There was a lentil, and I think a lamb stew, and then a uh, cream of mushroom. T- together? <laughs> well, they, they were in separate terrines. Separate terrines, yeah, right. I wonder if he's ever used a French onion. With the melted cheese on top, you know? Boy, that's good. <laughs> I like it. Do you like it? I, I love it. Oh. I, I, I can only imagine that popping, though. I think, I guess you'd have to take the cheese off to really get the bubbles going. <laughs> Maybe was, you don't agree? <laughs> Maybe I should talk to him about this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no sense me trying to figure it out. <laughs> you don't even like the guy. <laughs> Who does? <laughs> he sucks. <laughs> So we're another thing we're doing, and I hope you can come down for this. I'd love you to be a judge. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Anything I can do. We're doing a drag race with the security cameras <laughs> where, you know, the queens have to, like, uh, you know, go up and down the aisle, and then the judges will be in the back room watching on a security monitor. <laughs> it's all in black and white, which is terrible because it, it, you lose a lot of the fun of it the color and everything 
And also, you can't really make out people too good, like what their faces look like. Well, why are we back there? Why? Why just can't to we give just the queens more room to like, oh. you know, strut their stuff? We couldn't be on the next aisle over, looking over the bottles. No, because or... they get, because. I don't want to get into all the logistics with you because it's boring, right? But they're going to be they're going to be using all the aisles. They're going to be walking up and down, serpentine in between them, because the big finish is they all meet up in front of an end cap. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then they do a song together. They do a song together. Yeah. Wow, that must be hard to wrangle. Why? Well, they're competing against each other. I guess in the Miss America True. competition, you, you you know they choreograph a... I love when they do a song in Miss America when it's like, America is great, we love you. You did it again, United States of America. I salute you and the flag. I'm proud to be a lady from America. Thank you, founding fathers. You made this land so great. I wish that I could give you a great big hug and a kiss, but I can't because cancel culture is a coming for us all. Soon we won't be able to do this. We won't be able to put on little swimsuits and love America like we want to do. Uncle Sam, are you listening? We really need you now. Everybody's trying to shut us on down. Hey, America, I love you. My teeth are covered with Vaseline. Original fig, everyone. That's me. <laughs> That's simply you. That's simply me. Nothing more to it. <laughs> Is it stand-up time? I'm sorry. Yeah, let's walk around a little bit. I gotta kick down my. I gotta kick down yeah. my pant legs. Want to walk around a little? Yeah, just walk around a little. Ooh, nice QR code. <laughs> I'm so glad you were here to see it before it went away. No, where's it going? <laughs> QRIP. -Q <laughs> Whoa, were we doing a dance? What happened? That's fun. That was fun. You're a fun guy. You're fun. You're fun. Yeah, yeah, do it more. Keep going. What? I like those dance moves, lads. Yeah. What's that? Keep moving your bodies, you live creatures. Wait, that voice is familiar. You so sexy, familiar. sexy performers. Yes, get it in your hips a little more. We yes. stopped doing it like a minute ago. <laughs> oh no, I'm still seeing it. I'm still seeing it. Who could that be? I think it's our next guest. We mentioned we have a singer here. He just sold out 15 nights at Madison Square Garden. Please welcome Harry Styles. <laughs> Oh my God, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, holy fuck. Oh, yeah. Holy fuck. Oh, yeah, you. And also you. Oh, yeah, you. Getting a better look. Hello. Hello, lovely. Hello. Hello. I love you. Do I? I could. Oh, yeah. This was, yeah. Oh, you two, yeah. Oh, yeah. Have a seat, mate, if you want. There. Am I the singer? You're the singer. The pipe. No, come on. Oh, I will. <laughs> Hello. You two, an energy. Yeah, I could cut it. I could cut it right now. Do you know what you do? That's just sexy as all hell. A little, mm hmm. Did you see when he was doing that to you? Yeah, man, yeah. That beautiful, active listening. Yeah. So fucking hot. I felt heard, and what's more sexy than that? Exactly, you know, here you were, patient as all hell. I'm listening to this guy. The confidence in the pause, that's what was getting my ticker going. <laughs> and you, should I jump in, or should I give him a... <laughs> and I thought, these two... These two. I don't want to say, you do what you want, but these two. Hello? 
<laughs> Hello, where are you from? Hello, where are you from? Yeah, you, sir. Where are you from? Gross point. It's not gross. <laughs> I don't think it is. To you. No, why would it be? <laughs> Hello. Hello, Scott. Thanks for having me on your show. Lovely show. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Wonderful to have you, Harry. It's Thank a big, you. big honor to have you on the show. Oh, come on. We, we don't usually, especially post Backyard Era, we don't get big stars like you on the show. It's incredible to meet you for the first time. Oh, immediately. How's my face? Is it, is it full red? I mean, you're making me blush. A big star, come on. You know who's a big star? Mother, son. No, I know. I don't want to be cheeky and fake. Yeah, I am a massive star. Yeah, I could be a voice of a generation. Yeah, but you know what I like to be? I like to be, I like to work hard at it, you know? That's what I like. I like, ooh, yeah, the sweat, the crop top. How big are my pants? I like the work, Scott, you know? We're the same, you and I. Go ahead. Harry, you're in the midst of this 15-night residency at Madison Square Garden, yet you came all the way here to Detroit. No, 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 love. I came all the way to Royal Oak. You sexy tree. Now, I would prefer the monarchy to be just a symbol and hold no power or take no wealth, but the oak, one of the sexiest trees. What are, what are like your top five sexiest trees? Oh, great. Chestnuts. That's number five? Five. Okay. Number four, a palm tree. Palm tree? I like the length. <laughs> number three, a willow. Secrets, weeps. <laughs> number two, the oak. Number one, a Christmas tree. So, a pine tree. A, a Christmas tree. You, so, your uh, Christmas is coming. I mean, uh, I guess it's the not, goose is but, getting fat. Yeah, please to put a penny. Or well, that's your hat. I don't know. I don't know it. You don't know old songs, then? You just know... Oh, I, know so, I know some old songs. What's the oldest song you know? Okay, let me think. The oldest song I know. What shall we do with a drunken sailor? <laughs> oh, what shall we do with a drunken sailor? What shall we do with a drunken sailor? What shall we do with a drunken sailor? Early in the morning. Hello, love. Yeah, you got it. You've had some tough mornings. Wouldn't take them back, would you? Wouldn't take them back, would you? I'd never take back a tough morning. It means I had a great night. Not always. Love well, he's, he's young, he's young. You right. might, yeah, sorry, mate. You might be doing it wrong. Harry, you know what, man? You're fun. So, you know, you, you are fun, originally. No, yeah. you're fun. No, I, I loved everything I was catching about you. Thanks, man. Shows in a store, yes. I liked it. That sums it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I like, him, I like him being a, a sort of a corner of his neighborhood, you know. That's, that's great. We need that. We need that. Yeah, your neighborhood, now you're from England, obviously. That's right. And uh, you, you rose to fame in one direction, which was a boy band. That's right. I went in one direction, and now I'm going another. <laughs> oh, you know what, Scott, I should say, I know that there are these lovely people here in Royal Oak, Michigan, but I should say, because this is an audio medium, I'm doing a lot of fun drapies in a chair. Yeah, you're... 
I just want them to know. A lot of physical business. Yeah, well, you know, it's hard for me to just be in a stool, you know? I'm sort of a physical being. I'm a cat. Oh, you should be in one of his productions of Cats. Well, I didn't... Come on, man. Get to it slow. I don't want to come on too strong. No, Harry, we would, would love, we would love to have you anytime. Could I... No, I know you think. I know you're probably imagining. We're all going to say at the same time on the count of three. The cat you assume I would be. Okay. One, two, three. Rum Tum Tugger. Tum Tugger. I know you'd think I'm a curious cat, you know, because when you let me out, then I want to go in, you know, but... <laughs> if you'd have me, I'd love to offer up my services as uh, Skimbleshanks, the railway cat. You know what? We need a new Skimbleshanks. Is that right? Yeah. Great. Are you willing to show your butthole? <laughs> Love, come on, let's go to a sushi restaurant first. <laughs> yeah, of course, come on. Body's a beautiful vessel, Scott. I hope you feel the same. I mean, that's the worst part of the body. It's where poop comes out. But Scott, think about this. Think about this. What if your poop could never come out? Then where would you be? Probably die at two days old. So in that way, he's in the butthole, sort of a beautiful exit door that we're all given in the theaters of our bodies. Isn't it just a way for us to say farewell to a bit of meat, a bit of feast, a bit of veg, I'm a vegetarian, but no judgment. A bit of, a bit of something that you had that needs to go away after you've gotten your nutrition from it. You know what I think the worst part of the body, if you made me choose, don't make me. P please, though, choose. All right. If you make me choose, I think the worst part of the body is the back molars. <laughs> All the way back there. All the why way back? What? Yeah, why? Why is that, Harry? Tough to get your tongue back there. Tough to get your floss back there. feel like they're always, you know. If I had to pick. If I had to pick. More fun drapies. Yep. Now, uh, Harry, you you uh, have a you have a pretty high profile romance going with Olivia Wilde. Do I? She, of course, uh, is from the OC. And uh, is she? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that either. Which which part? She had a like six episode arc, I believe. Oh. The TV show, yeah, Harry. We, there's a TV show sure. in America called The O.C. And the sun, driving on a pond, and looking for the one I want. There you go. California, Peter Gallagher. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I thought you meant the county, and I was going to say, she Laguna girl. <laughs> she, strike, she strikes me as South County. <laughs> <laughs> means something to some people. <laughs> no one here. To, nobody here, but it means something to some yeah. people. But uh, she, of course, was married to Ted Lasso himself. Sure. How's it feel? Actually, yeah. never married, Scott. Oh, sorry, yes. But in a, in a relationship, has children with. Correct. How's it feel to steal Ted Lasso's <laughs> girlfriend? I mean, Boy, he's the friends, nicest man. They think you're so easy. They take you for granted. Ooh, I stole Ted Lasso's girl. <laughs> no, come on, no one can be stolen. No one can be stolen, Scott. Don't be silly. I'm not a pirate. I'm not a cheek. I'm not a cheeky little pickpocket. I'm not a little artful dodger. <laughs> You've got to pick a pocket or two, Scott, but not me. No, come on, I'm not, I'm not here to gloat. I'm not here to gloat. And really, you know, yes, perhaps I'm with Olivia. Or could I be with you? Or could I be with you? Or could I be with you? Hello? Could I be with you? You know? Hello? Oh, no, actually. Oh, magnificent. Could I be with you? People are volunteering in the audience. And could I be with you? Hello. And yes, oh, beautiful Mez. Sneaking off for a drink, are you? Could I be with you? 
this man sneaking off for a drink. Could I be with you? Yeah, I could be with any of you. Could I? I did a quick turn. Audio listeners, I did a quick turn. Just a 180. Just a little ah, over the shoulder, just a little. Yeah. Ah. So, you know, Scott. I, but, but you're not actually going to have sex with anyone here, are you? I don't know. You keep doing, see, you, Harry, you keep doing that. You're making faces, you're sticking out your tongue, you're rotating your hips. I, uh, you know, I don't, like, I don't like to be this guy who paints generational lines, but you know, we're just a little looser now. Look at me, you know? I'm here. Ah, yeah. I could be with four people at once and all of them would feel like they were only with me. That's how good I am. But I guess what I want to say is this is an act, right? I mean, you're not actually going to fuck four people in the audience. Like, <laughs> Olivia would get mad, right? So, oh, like, you're no. just, this is all a put on, right? Is it? Yeah. <laughs> You're not answering the question. It is, right? No, no, Scott. You know, monogamy, boundaries, they're all discussed. And there's always little, hello, what's this? Going over here, can I, you two, us still together, all at once, in the back. I say go, you say no, fair play. What about tomorrow? Different story, circle back. Can I ping that? Can I come on around? You know, so the thing is, Scott, everything's possible, nothing is guaranteed. That, I don't know, you know, I don't, I try not to overthink it, but I think that's part of my massive appeal. It's like, um, it's like a do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. That's right. But you're not cheating on her, right? No. Right. Just if I want to have sex with seven people at once, I get a quick text. Yeah. Hey, cool if I have six with seven people at once. She says, take some pics, and I'll say, love it. Kissy face. But she wouldn't do that. Do you know her? Are you, <laughs> no, you, I just, spy, are you spying on me, Scott? You know. I, I just I think you, I think you're more normal than you're pretending to be. I, oh, I think that that. You think me, Harry Styles, is normal? <laughs> I launched my own nail polish. But, see, that's what I mean. Like you, you don't like wearing nail, nail polish. You of just do I it because it gets a reaction out of no. people. What's wrong with a little paint on your little nails? That's a great part of the body. Similar to what whales have for teeth. <laughs> what makes our hair and nails grow is similar to what whales have for teeth. Baleen. Why not put a little shimmer on it? Why not put a little sage-colored brush on it? There's nothing wrong with it. I just... A lot of people say that everything you do is an act. So like your whole wearing dresses kind of thing is, is okay. to court an audience that you... Love, appreciate. Sure. Find deeply attractive. But you're just like a normal dude at home who like, you know, brings dinner to Olivia. And... Has a Pop-Tart. <laughs> yeah, like you eating Pop-Tarts. Have you ever eaten a Pop-Tart? Yeah. Does that make you, f do you, if you cut me, I do bleed. And you know, yeah, I've had a Pop-Tart. I tried toaster strudel and the icing melted too quick. So yeah, I prefer a Pop-Tart. <laughs> Even though the flake is more compelling than a toaster strudel. Brown sugar cinnamon. It's my preferred flavor, maple brown sugar cinnamon. Yeah, all right. Pretty normal flavor. Yeah. Just... Have you ever had pep treats? What's that? Pep treats. What's that? It's an off-brand Pop-Tart. Oh. <laughs> well, what flavors you got? Um, yellow, <laughs> brown, I love pink, brown, and dark brown. Okay, probably dark brown. Oh, yeah, it's pretty good. Oh, wait, is it more cocoa? Should I go light brown? Um, the light brown one is just plain, sure, and there's no filling. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't like dark brown then. Dark brown's pretty good. Great. You know, Scott, every, every performer in history, even you. Even me? Even you has a persona that they turn up for their fans, of course. But it's just a dial, ain't it, Scott? I feel, uh, uh, you it's just know. a little dial, don't you? Don't you feel that you just, you know, take sure. something that's true and turn it up? Sure. Ain't that the truth? 
And I don't mean to, to come at you. This is your whole no, thing. No. You're, you're gracing us uh, on the stage. I no, just, of course. No, it's I fine. just It's a lot to get, to get through. Is it my pants? <laughs> They're making you nervous. Ooh, Scott's nervous about my pants. For the audio listeners, I'm wearing quite loud trousers. Blue, grey and black sort of squigglies. Looks like bell bottom. My mum bought them for me. That's true. <laughs> Very close with my mum. That's also true. That's also true. That's also true. <laughs> You're just a nice young man who, who... A nice young boy who works so hard at his job. Sure. And you're trying to appeal to everybody and everything. And, That's right. And they seem to like you sticking out your tongue a lot because you're doing it quite often. <laughs> just want them to know. You know, I just don't know about another guy who brings out Shania Twain. You know what I mean? And then, and then brings out... Lizzo, and he brings out all kinds of friends and wears big fur coats. I feel like, come on, yeah, it's great. Don't you wish you could strut around in a fur coat? I could. <laughs> I, I choose not to, though. Okay. So then, you don't wish that. You don't, <laughs> do you not want to be in Cats, then? What? You don't want to be in Cats, then? You don't want to be in Cats? I mean, I'll be in Cats, yeah, of course. I mean, do, do, which part? Grisabella. She's an old glamour puss. Sure, yeah, I know who Grisabella is, of course. Get sing memory. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> when's this show? It's in two weeks. Oh. When's rehearsals? Uh, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> we have a show tomorrow, unfortunately. I can't. Uh -oh. <laughs> Back to the drawing board for original fig. <laughs> Well, Harry, uh, well, what's coming up uh, uh, for you? Anything uh, in the hopper there? You have your movie coming out, Don't Worry Darling. That's right. That's right. It got Sounds like it's smooth sailing. <laughs> I have that film coming out. Uh, you know, I need to get back in the studio soon. Been doing a lot of tour dates, obviously. Obviously, Harry's house, massive, massive success. Did you see James Corden made a video with me? No. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> well, Harry, thank you so much for dropping by. <laughs> Harry Styles, everyone. keep going if you like no 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 no? Right. no no it's just can you stick around though we, yeah, have, a, yeah, we yeah. have a great guest coming out do you do you have a physical therapist yeah really yeah it can be you know gotta keep those everything got it limber mm -hmm. how about you fig oh yeah oh yeah what, what, what do you get worked on i get hydrotherapy <laughs> what is that uh somebody throws me in a pool with four sets of clothes on <laughs> Is it your responsibility to find your way out, or do they drain It's them? more than a responsibility, Scott. It, <laughs> it becomes an imperative. All right, well, our, our next guest is a physical therapist. This is exciting. He's been on the show many times. Please welcome back to the show, Stanley Chamberlain. Hello, thank you. Thank you so much, Royal Oak. Hello. Thank you. Thank you so much. Harry, it's an honor. Hello. Original, nice, nice to see you. Man. Nice to see you. Mr. Ackerman, pleasure to be back. Pleasure to have you, Stanley. It's so great to see you again. Great to see you too. God damn it. <laughs> Sorry, it's not you. I'm just, I'm stressed. Some of my previous appearances on the show have hurt my business considerably. 
I don't know if everybody here remembers yeah. my previous... Let's recap experience. exactly what happened. Some you... people don't even know what's going on the whole night. I heard your intro. Some people got dragged here. They wouldn't know that. Even though I, I'm a huge fan of yours, Scott, and the show, it's been bad for my business. Right. Well, the first time you came on, you were ostensibly here to talk about your... Not physical... ostensibly, Scott. I was there to promote my business of physical therapy. Very early in the interview, one of your guests, Gino the intern... Um, weaseled out of me that in my medical school education I participated in a slightly quote pagan unquote ritual (laughs) which resulted in me slightly murdering several of my classmates with machetes and when that got out my business dropped off I would say precipitously If you you had to assign a percentage to it. I would say um, 100%. I have not had a client since my first appearance on your show. I beg your pardon. It's not your fault. It's not, and I don't even blame Gino. It's just, you know, I, it was true. Maybe it was meant to come out. But nonetheless, right. it's caused me stress. Sure. And then the second time you were on the show? Uh, I don't remember. I think it was brief and uh, I fun. I don't remember either. I don't remember either. But, yeah, but that, that first one, that was the problem. The first one really caused a lot of problems. When people found out that I had slightly semi-murdered several of my classmates in a pagan ritual at med school, it hurt my business. But I am optimistic that I'll be able to get the business back. Maybe uh, we can turn it around with this. Maybe we can turn it around, yes. Yeah, let's talk about your business. Thank you so much. What what, what type of services would you like to provide? I would love to provide physical therapy, (laughs) just normal physical therapy, and not give advice on murdering anybody. That's what I would love, for someone to come in to my Los Feliz physical therapy office Maybe they've got, you know, maybe they got like a, a frozen shoulder situation. Maybe they pulled a muscle in their back. The classic frozen your shoulder. Classic. Your number one reason people <laughs> Doc, go to a physical therapy. I froze my shoulder. I would love it. If somebody came into my office and like, I froze my shoulder, I would, I would throw a party and not sure. be like, you know how to kill people, right? I'd be like, I... Because the converse, that's what happens. That's what happened, really? What, what is the best way to kill someone if you Look, had to... It's not my expertise, it's okay. Listen, I can't stress this enough. Yes, I engaged in a pagan ritual for several hours at Johns Hopkins University's on my university. It's not plural. Wait, there are two. There are two Johns Hopkins universities, but I only attended the east one. There's a west. There's a hidden secret a hidden west one. coast Johns what? Hopkins University. What happens at the secret one? I can't talk. It. Listen, don't get me into this. Is but, it a medical school? Yes, it's a medical school. It's a shadow medical school. Look, it doesn't what does matter. that mean? It doesn't matter. What I, does? didn't, I didn't go to it. I went to the East Coast. Well, then what do you care? So it's a shadow medical yeah, school. Just tell us about it. It doesn't matter if you attend either of the universities. You find out about the other one. But what does the Wait. West Coast have to learn about the East Coast one? That it's a normal school. Yeah, I, I, look, I assume that they're just like, look, you're the shadow university. There's a public university, but you will both be indoctrinated. I don't know. What do I, they? What do they teach there? <laughs> they teach, from what I understand, the West Coast Johns Hopkins universities has a little bit of an experimentation with psychedelics. A small course on the first day where you have to drink a cup of pure liquefied psychedelic mushroom. Is this like an MK Ultra situation? <laughs> MK Ultra. Never mind. <laughs> is, is it is it for remote viewing or like on a Zoom or I don't what, what do you Never mind. <laughs> this is a callback to earlier in the show. No. I'm... These are just things I guess we're interested in. <laughs> <laughs> So, so like they have to drink. They have, they have to, to drink, drink it. They have to drink some pure liquefied mushroom and have a psychedelic experience. And then it's a normal medical school. And I'm not responsible for. Oh, wait, it. after the first day, it's normal. But the first day is very much not normal at all. Is that just the first part of the first day? The whole 24 hours, you are tripping balls at the shadow. Johns Hopkins University West. You're tripping balls. What is the purpose of this? To expand your mind because you're going to because if you go to the West Coast, you will be part of the Dr. Illuminati squad. <laughs> where you and you you will be forced to perform medical treatments on the shadow governments around the world. And yes, there are shadow governments. 
What are the shadow governments? Every These are like- head of state, every government that's in place in the planet Earth, there's a public government and then a shadow, parallel shadow government. This is like, like Seattle and then underground Seattle? Yes, exactly. So if you go to Seattle, it's one of the few cities where the shadow realm is exposed because, you know, the shadow level. Mm. But all governments, like every, you know, like whatever, like Wales, there's like the Wales Parliament and then like Good pull. Shadow Wales. Good pull. <laughs> I, I don't mean to nitpick. Are there any ones that are like more exciting than Wales? I'm, <laughs> yeah. Let's maybe talk about United States of America. Uh, oh, you guys are experts on Shadow Wales? No, I happen to, I did my exchange program at Shadow Wales, so I know. Shadow Wales, they know how to party, all right? Shadow Wales is pretty No one's great. disputing they know how to party. We're more interested in the, like, the responsibilities Power. and duties. Yeah, Shadow Wales, they don't have a lot does, of effect on world events. Does Shadow Wales have real dragons? How do well, I can't confirm or deny if Shadow Whales? That means they do. I knew it. That's a yes. It's I, on I, the flag. <laughs> Hide in plain sight, right, Harry? Right. Right. At my physical therapy office, I offer a program. We don't care about your. I hate to say this, we don't care about your physical normal therapy. normal stretching. You know, COVID has really, really taken a toll on on people's physical condition, and I, a normal physical therapist am ready to help help people get conditioned did you ever is 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 the west coast one connected by an underground tunnel yes yes there is a high speed tunnel high speed how high are these speeds elon musk is lying he's finished the tunnel company it connected both johns hopkins universities in early 2015 wait is the one thing he actually completed one thing he did (laughs) it's the one thing he did both Johns Hopkins universities are connected by a really cool high-speed tunnel. You can cross the country in six minutes. Six minutes? Six minutes. You strap yourself onto a missile, and it shoots across the country. Zero casualties. This is like Wiley e. Coyote. <laughs> yeah, it is like Acme. There's like a couple, of, there's a row of dynamites. A guy in an engineer cap lights them up. You're strapped to the front of the missile. You shoot through the tunnel. Six minutes later, you are in San Jose. From Baltimore to San Jose. Six minutes. I did it many times. Can you, can you like, get from New York to Baltimore? Like, no. There's no. nothing. There's no other routes have been finished. Okay, so you have to take it's the normal train. If you need to go from Baltimore to San Jose, that's all I can help you with. Okay. And there's no return trip. <laughs> Just one way. <laughs> no. Not by tunnel. You have to slingshot back. There's a Sling- massive slingshot that fire. This is way more than six minutes, but it, it, they fire you through the air and you land on a huge pillow in Baltimore. I'm surprised that no one has ever hit a plane or wait, is this how Sully Sullenberger? Listen, I'm not allowed to confirm or deny anything. What? How deep does this go? We all this time we've been blaming a goose. Look, there was a goose, but one of the med students hit the goose, and then, and then unfortunately, this is the one casualty on the return trip, entered the engine of Sully's plane and, and caused that crash, unfortunately. There was no tunnel. It was a slingshot both ways at that time. <laughs> this is why they made the tunnel. Yeah, this was 2008. The Slingshot Express had its first casualty of causing... I didn't mean to get into any of this. I, I know, look, I'm look. a normal physical therapist. This doesn't matter. Yes. I gotta, I gotta know. What? Before they built the tunnel. Yes. Did any two slingshotted people ever collide? Yes. There? Yes, but they were fine. They were fine because we Wait, drugged them. They were them. fine. No, they were fine. I have to know. Did they fall in love? <laughs> Good looking out, Harry. Not at first. Not at first. But they were linked. They hugged and they fell into a wheat field in Kansas and survived. And they had to do physical therapy together. Stop trying to bring it back to physical therapy. I'm just therapy. saying. We don't care. That's what I came on to talk about. I am a physical therapist. Thank you. I know not of pagan rituals or machete murder. I mean, I, I do. But... I am not an expert in pagan rituals or murders or shadow governments or West Coast universities or bullet trains or slingshots. Have I done all those things? Yes, many times. But I'm not an expert. What I know about is squats. Do you, do you serve on the shadow government? What are you talking about? That's crazy. Do I serve on a shadow government? You can't. 
serve on more than one at once. So, does so that wait, answer wait, wait, your question? You, you can't serve on more than one of the shadow governments. So you're already one. serving? It doesn't matter if I'm on a shadow government. What shadow government are you already serving on? Wales. Wales. Please be Wales. It's got to be Wales. Please be Wales. It's not Wales. I'm, not a, I'm, banned, I'm banned from the shadow government of Wales. Why? What'd you do? Because I partied too hard in Wales. Even for the shadow government? I out-partied Wales, dude. I out-partied those blamos. That's awesome. I showed that's, them how it's done. That's awesome. What's your poison? When I party? C cigars. <laughs> I, my body chemistry is such that tobacco has a crazy effect on me. So if I hit like three cigars, I'm out of my mind. Three right? cigars? <laughs> yeah, three cigars. Was this due to experiments performed upon you at Johns Hopkins University's? Look, I did have experiments performed on me, but not enough to confirm that they created a tobacco sensitivity. <laughs> Most of the experiments were cigar oriented. Yes. <laughs> yes. Which of the which of the Johns Hopkins was this? At both Johns At Hopkins both universities, I had cigar-oriented... It's interesting to see the faces of the crowd right now. I'd say about 50% are more engaged, and 50% are like, how long is this? <laughs> <laughs> how long is this explanation? It's, I got more. So... At both of the Johns Hopkins universities, experiments were performed on me with cigars. I would smoke a cigar and then try to like catch an arrow. I would smoke a cigar and then like take an SAT. You know, I, I would like smoke a cigar and then try to crack a safe to see like what effect it had on me to see if it improved or diminished any of my abilities. And let me guess, who is administering these cigars? Bill Clinton. <laughs> I wish. I wish. Bill Clinton is my hero. He did, he did <laughs> bail me out of jail. He bailed you out of jail? He bailed me out of jail. What happened? Why did you get arrested? Uh, on one of my cigar trips in the west coast of Johns Hopkins University, I was so out of my mind from the effects of the tobacco that I tried to lead a revolt and have Northern California secede from the nation. And I made huge headway. I had like hundreds of people behind me. That's not Sacramento. huge headway. You don't think so? <laughs> hundreds. hundreds. You're gonna oh, need more starting than that. from zero and no plan, I had several hundred people on board with me. Well, this is in a space of, of how long? Uh, several months. Okay, this is. <laughs> anyway, I was in deep trouble. This was in the 90s. Uh, and I just, and, I, and the, the, the Capitol Police of Sacramento arrested me. And I couldn't think of who else to turn to. And I wrote a letter to Bill Clinton, just a shot in the dark. And, it, you know, the, the president's answer, like one or two pieces of mail a day, kind of ceremonially. And he picked mine. And <laughs> he came directly and bailed me out in cash. <laughs> He was like, don't tell anybody. I was like, your secret's safe with me. I never, I never reveal anything. <laughs> I just realized I shouldn't have said Probably shouldn't have all said of that. that. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Bill. Sorry, Bill. Um, where was I? Yeah, so I did lead a revolution. Several cigar-oriented experiments were placed on me. For whatever reason, that left me with a very low sensitivity to cigar tobacco, and I partied so hard in Wales, they banned me from serving on their shadow government. And so I, I can't serve on the shadow okay. government. Okay, so which one are you serving on? Belgium. <laughs> Belgium. I'm on the shadow government of Belgium, which is in charge of weather. The, the, they control the, the weather? The shadow government of Belgium controls the weather! Oh my God, I have a friend, Obi-Wan Kenobi, who would be very interested in this. Really? <laughs> yeah. Why? He wants to control the weather. He does? Yep. Well, all he's got to do is attend the West Coast University of Johns Hopkins do the trip for a day and then, you know, try to, you know, weasel his way into the shadow government of Belgium. It should be pretty easy. <laughs> it's pretty easy. Anyway, my physical therapy office, we're offering a 25% discount. That's not a lot if you have zero <laughs> customers. Hey, I know what I'm doing. You can't, you, if you drop something to zero, then no one's going to, no one's going to, you know, people assume it's got no value. Can I ask you a physical therapy question? Oh my God, yes, that'd be great. Thank you. What does what does rice stand for again? Um, rice. In my office, it's different than in other offices. Oh, okay. I can't remember. So yeah, rice stands for run, incel, um, creep elsewhere. It's an anti-incel acronym. If any incels come in the office, I'm like rice. 
And they know. They know. <laughs> they know what that means. They hit the road. They've been found out. Run and sell creep elsewhere. Is it a problem with in your office with yes. this happening? I got tons of incels, tons of incels coming to my office, and they're like, "We relate to you." I'm like, "Why? Why? I despise you. I despise you." I just—it's your whole background. Dude. I, what are I you mean... talking about? I'm a normal man. There's nothing interesting about me. Yes, I serve on the shadow government of Belgium. Yes, I have a sensitivity to Sakaar tobacco that gives me super strength. Super strength? Yes! What? I have super strength. How strong are you? In, when I smoke a cigar, I can lift up a piano and a half. Where are you getting these half pianos? That's how you measure, that's how you measure weightlifting in Belgium. They have like units of, you go to any gym in Belgium, it's all pianos. You, you start with an eighth of a piano, I got up to a piano and a half. I can. Could you not just do bench. baby grand grands in uprights? Um, no. <laughs> got it. Literally cut them in eight. Fair enough. Yeah, they're, do you cut them lengthwise? I would imagine they're full grand pianos. They're sliced lengthwise, and they still work. So when you got an eighth of a piano, depending on what the register is, yeah, you know. How many octaves are they? They have eighty-eight. Keys. Eighty-eight keys. Let's let's dig in on that. Um, <laughs> so I guess Sorry, that's I'm a doing. Le- Doing 11 math octaves, in my head. I guess. 11, or maybe it's 10 with, du- I don't know, who knows? Look. Well, the white, yeah, the white and the black keys, unfortunately. Well, if it's 88, maybe there's a double, I don't know. 10 yeah, or 11 anyway. octaves. So- this is like boring enough. I want to hear about physical therapy. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. That'd be great. I would love to talk about physical therapy. Who cares that I have super strength or that I married the princess of Denmark? That doesn't what? matter. What? Hold on a minute. Yes, I married the princess of Denmark. Why? Who cares? Let's talk I about do. her I love. Do. I care. I care. That sounds lovely. She's lovely. She's great. She's chill. She can hang. You know, she's out of my league in every way. I can't believe I landed her. In hey, this. do you feel like you married your best friend? I do. I, I lucked out. I, I, yeah, I do. I do. Good Thank, for you, man. Thanks. Uh, you know, I, she was charmed. I saved her. She was trapped under a horse, and I lifted it up. And how? What? What is the horse to piano conversion rate? I couldn't lift it over my head. You know, a piano and a half, no problem. But a horse, I could just, just, just get enough. I think a horse has several pianos. How did she get trapped under the horse? Well, we. I dared her to. Uh, <laughs> I dared her to, to so go you were, the horse. So you were saying this like you rescued her. I did That's rescue how you her. met. I did rescue her. But this is the, After the I meeting. said, I bet you can't piss off that horse. She was like, you don't think, you don't, wait. You don't think I can piss off a horse? And I was like, yeah, you're so regal and, you know, f- you know you're so refined. I bet you're, you're not, you couldn't be uncontained enough to piss off a horse. She's like, watch me, I'll go piss off a horse. And then she clocked, she clocked this horse across the face. Conan the Barbarian style? Yes, and then it like just turned sideways, calm, calm as a Zen Buddha and just fell over on her. <laughs> and I walked over, I said, this is my fault, this is my fault. And they lifted it up and I said, I owe you a coffee. <laughs> and that led to a relationship. And now I'm... I am dating the princess of Denmark. I thought you were married to her. Huh? Oh, no. What happened? What? Did, are you, is your relationship in trouble? We divorced. But You're like scaling it back? I'm winning her back. I'm winning her back. Oh, okay. What did you say? Scamming her back? Scaling it back. Yeah, no, we divorced. Like if you were married and you're like, I don't want to get divorced. Let's just date. <laughs> we got divorced. She's, she's a, like a volatile woman. She's chilling. She can hang until you cross a certain line. And then she's like, I'm leaving you. Well, as soon as you dare her to do something... Yeah, so I was like, I dare you to date me. On the, in the divorce trial, I was like, I dare you to date me. She's like, I'll do it. And then, <laughs> so now we're dating, and she is my best friend. <laughs> uh, anyway. Up to a point, and when you cross that point. I mean, I would still say she loves me even when, I, you know, when she gets, goes in the red. But um, that's you know, subject to debate. Look, anyway, 25% off. Come to Los Feliz. I'm a normal physical therapist. None of this matters. I'm good at it. Okay, look at me. My body is perfect. My body is physical perfection. I, I, do, I condition it every day. Yeah. Every, I get up every morning. Thank you. Take a look. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that vessel. Watch, check out the squat. Excellent form. For the audio listeners, no he's doing an excellent squat. Excellent squat, no tremors. Yeah, kept, kept the heels down, that's how you know. <sighs> anyway. Well, good luck to you, Stan. Yeah, thanks I, so much. I, I don't know that this is going to necessarily turn things around for we'll you. We'll see. 
Yeah, at least you didn't admit to any murders on this one, right? No. The, you haven't I, murdered anyone recently, right? I have. <laughs> um, but no, I didn't admit to it, so I think we're free and clear of that one. I think you're clear. Stanley Chamberlain, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Good to see everybody. Thank you. Well, we have a, uh, a very exciting final guest. We've... <laughs> did you hear that? <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> it's a... Uh, uh, um... <laughs> what? Did you see that? I saw something out of the corner. What of was that? That's so legit scary. Um, <laughs> I'm Something very under the QR code. Scott, give me what you promised me. <laughs> What? Oh no! Give me what you, you promised promise? to me, Scott. Did you make a promise? What was that? My God, this is like hereditary. Where? Where is the baby, Scott? The baby? Wait, uh, where's the baby? Where? I don't. I don't remember talking about any sort of baby. Uh, but I oh, think. Oh. oh dear! Oh my God! What is that? That is a low creep. I don't know. I like what it. What is it? You like it, Harry? I like Come it. Come on, Harry. You gotta ah, be scared. That's creepy. Hi. I like the movement. I know. Scott, you, my you, baby. My baby? I don't have a baby. You are my baby. I'm your baby. What? What, Scott? Uh, I think this is our next guest, everyone. This is uh, a mythical creature I was talking about. This is a uh, Rumple Dimple screen. <laughs> of me. And Scott, you were the baby that was promised to me. <laughs> Wait, I was the baby that was promised to you? Scott, in 1977... I'm gonna move a little bit away from you. <laughs> Scott, I know you don't like physical touch. This delights me. <laughs> In 1977, Scott, your mom came to Detroit. I riddled her this, I riddled her that, I riddled her to the point. She couldn't answer the riddle, and so she promised me her firstborn son. But I wouldn't be born for another 15 years. <laughs> Scott, huh? you, Scott, you can't fool this goblin. Scott, Scott. <laughs> Wait, so my mom promised her firstborn son to you? Why? Yes! Why would she do something like that? Because In exchange she's for bad at riddles, Scott. This is what I do, okay? Rumple, dimple, scream. <laughs> scream. Forgot your own scream. name. Scream. Partway through. Scream. Oh. What's that? I just, I liked how she was getting her own name right halfway through. I just <laughs> thought that was adorable. Rumple, dimple, scream. Say it again and see what happens. Rumple dimple scream? Say it once more. I'm tired of it. <laughs> you see, I live under Detroit. And under Detroit? <laughs> under Detroit. <laughs> under Detroit. Harry, you got one? <laughs> Not a different one. <laughs> Under Detroit. I'll just circle back. Just sing it better, sure. <laughs> Say my name and get it right. Crumpled Dimple Scream. Wrong. <laughs> now listen, it was 1977, your mom was in Detroit, and I am a bit of a Ridley Gooley goblin, and I live in the, under the Detroit crust. And... <laughs> And I found your mother singing by a pond, and I riddledy diddled her, <laughs> and she got it wrong. And so I said, you have to give me your firstborn son or something of equal or greater value. That was nice to give an option. What's of equal or greater value to you? I don't know, TV. <laughs> <laughs> like a nice flat screen? Hot tub, spa, golf cart, gift card. <laughs> iTunes gift card. <laughs> iTunes I gift love card. golf carts. Yeah, give her a golf cart, mate. Give her one. Well, uh, so what was the riddle that she 
she got wrong. Hmm, let me remember. Hmm. <laughs> what is the capital of Alberta? <laughs> oh. The riddle is more of a trivia question, or <laughs> what is the capital of Alberta? And your mother said Calgary. <laughs> it's Edmonton. <laughs> oh, Edmonton. Yes, but your mother got it wrong. She said Calgary? Yes. Common mistake. <laughs> and so she promised me you, but then she drove away and I can't drive. <laughs> so wait, you've been waiting for me to come back to Detroit? <laughs> Welcome home, my baby. T-T-T-T. T-T-T-T. I mean, a deal's a deal. What, what, what do you, if I, can I ask a question? What, what do you need a... I went to John Hopkins with you. <laughs> Is that right? Yes, I, of course I can't leave Detroit because I don't drive, but I did correspondence. Oh, you did the correspondence with the East or West Coast branch? Both. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, do, uh, under the, the, under Detroit. Under. <laughs> do, did you ever see the, the high speed... Transport under there? Yeah, that's how I got to school. <laughs> Correspondence. Nice, nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. My question. <laughs> wow, well, what do you what what do you want with a baby? What, what, what does a riddle goblin need a what baby? What wouldn't a goblin want with a gorgeous baby like this? I, a baby to hug, a baby to hold, a baby to brave and bigly bold. <laughs> A baby to kiss, a baby to smooch, a baby to... Oh, loaded do do <laughs> Such good rhymes. <laughs> I didn't think you'd stick the landing, but man. Ah! <laughs> well, rum, rum. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, love, yes. <laughs> Love your stool work. Very similar energies happening. Yeah. I, you know, I'm not a baby anymore. I'm a grown-ass man. Oh, that's not well, true, is it? Everyone say, no, Scott, you're a baby. No, Scott, you're a baby. See, they agree. I mean, it could be relative. Oh, no, something's happening. What? Scott, oh, he's shrinking. Oh, my gosh. He's becoming yeah. The power of the audience has turned him into a baby. Oh, I didn't know we were doing a spell. Oh, gosh. It's like Peter Pan, but instead of saving Tinkerbell, we just reverted a human man. <laughs> to make it easier for him to be abducted by a goblin. Oh, no, he's sucking his thumb. <laughs> Careful, your teeth, Scott, your teeth. Ow! <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Oh, you think the problem is that you would bite your own thumb? <laughs> oh no, Goblin, does he have the sentience of a grown-ass man but the body of a tiny baby? Or yeah. worse, the sharp teeth of a man but the tender thumb of an infant. Enough! Whoever dares insult my baby one more time slap <laughs> will have to listen to a Ridley rhyme and if you get it wrong, you must give me a baby song. <laughs> Ooh. First riddle for you. What? what? Shibbity dabba, hoobity he. What could ever simply be taller than a tree? What could be taller than a tree? All right, hang on. Sounds like a trick. Say. Probably the obvious answer isn't what? the right one. So Say I'll... quick. Squirrel. You got it. Yeah. Because technically, a squirrel can be in a tree and it could be taller than a tree if it's sitting on top of it. That's okay. exactly what I was thinking. Dabbat, skibidi, hui. Oh no. What would you find in an ocean bay? What would I find in an ocean bay? Yes, this one's tricky. Um. See, zombie, zombie, zombie. See, zombie, zombie. All right, I have my answer. Oh. 
咚咚咚咚咚咚咚咚咚咚咚咚，我有咚咚咚咚，我有咚咚咚咚。Okay, I have my answer. What would I find in an ocean bay? Yes. Peace and tranquility. Fuck. Wow. Did I get? Did I get? Nice. Nice. Way to go, original. Good job. Thanks. Oh! <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Last and hardest one for you, Harry Styles. Shushli kila hula na me. What? <laughs> is two plus two plus three? Fuck. <laughs> oh, that is tricky, Harry. <laughs> two plus Harry. two plus three. This is a oh, layup. No. Oh my dear, my dear. That'll be seven. Is it? I can't do math. <laughs> you don't even know the answer to your own riddle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah! No! Oh, oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> you punched the baby off of me. <laughs> I'm just a regular man now. I get so frustrated. That's why I'm not good at riddles. Your mom is just so bad at them. I mean, not a lot of people know what the capital of what was it? Quebec? Alberta. Alberta. Who even cares about Canada? You what? Hmm? Huh? <laughs> Look, why why did you get into this whole riddle game anyway? I mean, it doesn't seem like you're that great at it. How many people have gotten it wrong? So Scott's mom got it wrong. Scott, that girl's we all mom got too. it She's right. She's my daughter. <laughs> This my baby. Do you remember the oh, wow. riddle that your mom got wrong? <laughs> I think you do. Oh, you finish it for me. It was skibbulty habit, bibbulty b. What does a man see? What skibbulty bibbulty b? Bibbulty b. What does a man see? <laughs> She got it wrong. <laughs> what, what, what does is, a man see? Wait, so was, that, was that it? The it's, riddle. Wait. The riddle which is. Which part was the riddle? Skibbly Bob. Skibbly B. What does a man see? What does a man see? What he chooses to see, right? That's the right answer. Yes. Also, but, like. But your mom said vision. <laughs> More like how he sees. So, maybe she didn't. Maybe she misheard. Yeah. Oh yeah! If somebody mishears the riddle, like, is that their fault? That's kind of the only way I get them.、Oh. <laughs> I'm sweaty. <laughs> You're a sweaty little mythical creature, aren't you? What, what type You're of? A sweaty little bitch, baby. <laughs> All right. I wasn't insulting. Baby, 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 shh, baby. Now nobody won the riddle game, which probably made you sad because nobody sang you your baby song, right? Right. Someone will sing my baby a song.、Um, so, someone will sing me a song. Someone sing a to... sing a baby song. Someone who or, gets or, my or riddle any, wrong. Any kind of song. Just sing me a song. I, I'm a baby. I need this a for some reason. For a baby, baby song. A baby song. A baby Hold baby on a second, song. Rupal Doppel. <laughs> It's Rumpel Dimple Scream. Okay. Did you guys remember? <laughs> If one of us sings a song that soothes the baby, yes. Will you let the baby go? Hmm, that doesn't seem like something I would do. <laughs> But my baby's so cute, and I want him to have a good future. Please, mommy. Aww. I'm so unsoothed right now. I need a. And I need to get back to these people. Yes. <laughs> Everyone say, "I love you, baby." I love you, baby. Yes. My heart is being softened. You may sing a good song, and I'll let my baby free. And once my baby is free, he'll unbutton his shirt and go crowd surf across. <laughs> yes. Wow. That was a big heightening there at the end of that. <laughs> okay, begin. <laughs> <laughs> we'll each take a shot. All right, you go first. Okay.、Uh, hey, hey, 
baby. I want to know if you could be my girl. Who? Ha. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, hey, baby. Yeah. Uh, didn't sue the baby. Okay, next contestant. Now I'm Simon Cowell. <laughs> You're really up on pop culture for a goblin. Yes, well, a lot going on in Detroit's crust. I love Detroit style crust. <laughs> yes. Okay, contestant number two. All right. <clears throat> Soften my heart and soothe my baby, or you will end up a puddle of gravy. What? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> wow. It's worse for you. Man, this guy got off. Yeah, I got it wrong. I'm not gravy. <laughs> right. I, I can't see the baby. <laughs> <laughs> Little baby, little baby, don't you cry. Little baby, little baby, don't you sigh. Because your daddy loves Stop, you. Stop, it's trash gravy! Yeah. Oh my gosh! Oh, original Turn fig well, gravy! Well, well, original well. fig is original fig gravy! I'm drowning in gravy! <laughs> oh. oh! Oh no! This is terrifying! Last contestant? That will all up to you! Oh dear, oh dear me! Oh, which baby Last song? contestant, this give is like it a the... try, or I will buy you a french fry! All right! <laughs> Well, wow, it's not as bad at all. I just got to say, this is like the 50 weirdest thing to ever happen to me. Wait, what do you get? You get a, you get a French fry? <laughs> yeah. If I lose, I get a French fry. <laughs> and I am transformed into gravy? Yeah, mate. And, then you and, and, and for me, it was nothing. <laughs> You know, go home, get, get ahead. I don't want to talk that. about Sorry. the way that it was, you know? All right. Um, <clears throat> I want my baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back. And how I want my baby, baby back, back, baby, baby back, back, baby, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, back, back ribs. And how I want my baby, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, 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 Of the crowd. Wow! I've never seen anything like it, and no one had their phones out in time to catch it. Wow, yeah. Oh, oh I'm back. You so, made it all the way around the crowd. Oh, that was that a crazy was somersault you did halfway through. That was magic, mate. Oh, what my that gosh. the most people that's ever touched your penis? <laughs> <laughs> that's a Tuesday for me. All right, everyone, that's our show. <laughs> Lisa Gilroy, everyone! Will Hines! Jessica McKenna! Paul M. Tompkins! Thank you, Detroit! We love you, Detroit!